FIP relapses are more likely to occur when cats are treated with injections rather than with antiviral pills, such as GS441524 or molnupiravir, which is also known as EIDD2801. In this brief video for veterinary surgeons, I will present some of the evidence for Rule 3 of my 10 rules for preventing FIP relapses. Rule 3 is use oral, not injectable, coronavirus antivirals, such as GS441524 or molnupiravir, also known as EIDD2801, and do not use remdesivir injections unless you really have no other option. Feline coronavirus, the virus that causes feline infectious peritonitis, mainly replicates in the intestine, initially in the small intestine as shown here. You can see the virus stained black in cells at the tips of the villi. Later in infection, the virus will mainly replicate in the ileum and colon. Unfortunately, injectable forms of antivirals do not reliably reach the intestine, so they don't eradicate virus from the whole body. I know this because a cat we treated with GS441524 injections continued shedding coronavirus for at least two years after he'd received a full 12-week course of GS441524. Allowing the virus to replicate in the presence of low doses of the antiviral makes drug resistance more likely to occur, which is why FIP treatment should not be started with injections. Injectable antivirals reach the monocytes and macrophages where the virus causes FIP, so the cat will appear to go into remission, but if the virus is left anywhere in the body, a relapse can occur. In some cats, virus persists in the brain or the cerebrospinal fluid, leading to a neurological relapse but that will be the subject of another video. Roy et al. published a paper in 2020 about rescuing 30 cats treated for feline infectious peritonitis, but who subsequently suffered a relapse. This is table one from Roy's paper, and if you zoom in on the column which shows what the cats were treated with first, and scroll down, you can see that only 3 of 26 relapsed cats were treated by purely pill form of GS441524. The other 23 were treated with GS injections or a combination of injections and pills. Four other relapsed cats were treated with molnupiravir, which is always a pill. This cat was treated with injectable and oral GS441524, the next cat, injectable GS441524, injectable, 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 injectable and oral. I won't read them all out. You can see for yourself, the paper is open access. So 23 of the 30 relapsed cats began their FIP treatment with injections, not pills. And this is a pattern I've seen in my online consulting practice that cats referred to me for an FIP relapse almost always began treatment with injectable antivirals instead of pills. I do have to say that no study exists so far as I know that compares outcomes of injections versus pills. In other words, there's no study with a control group. However, among cases that began treatment with me on pills, there were no relapses, and mostly those guardians followed my 10 rules. When Professor Peterson discovered that GS441524 can cure FIP, he had to work out the dose of drug needed and how long to administer it. He used GS441524 injections and began with a dose of 2 mg per kilogram. Five of the 31 cats in the clinical trial died within days, and he described resistance to the drug in one cat who died 26 days into treatment. The virus load in that cat had not decreased. Eight of the remaining 26 cats appeared to respond, but then relapsed. Remember that all of them were treated by injection. Drug-resistant viruses can emerge when the drug fails to clear virus from the whole body. In the case of cats, that means clearing virus from the gut and the brain, whereas in COVID in people, drugs with good penetration of the lungs are required. If you are interested in antiviral drug resistance, then please watch my other video on the subject. I will leave a link to the papers in those platforms that allow me to leave links, but they are both open access and not difficult to find. 
This is the reason for Rule 3 of the 10 Rules for Preventing FIP Relapses. Treat FIP with pills, not injections. It is also one of the reasons for not using remdesivir, which is given by injection. Obviously, if some cats are too sick to swallow, then injections might have to be used, although I'd prefer a nasogastric tube and the pill crushed into powder and mixed with fluids and given that way. In addition to the gut, the other areas that we know GS441524 doesn't penetrate well into at normal FIP treatment doses are the brain and the eyes. The drug doesn't easily cross the blood-brain barrier, which is why a double dose needs to be used for cases of neurological FIP. Most FIP relapses manifest as neurological relapses, and I'll be making videos about those. Fortunately, oral forms of antivirals have been developed. They wipe out the virus from the intestine first. They hit the virus where it is replicating the most. And this is why there are fewer relapses in cases treated with GS pills than those treated by GS injections. A PDF of the 10 rules for preventing FIP relapses, with a brief explanation for each rule, can be downloaded from my catvirus.com website. Go to www.catvirus.com, click on the FIP treatment tab, which will take you to the FIP treatment page, then click on the 10 rules heading, and the article will open in a new window, or your computer might simply download the PDF, depending on which browser you use. Huge thanks, as always, to the catvirus.com subscribers and donors who funded this video and my research. Thank you for watching, and God bless you and your cats. This is Diane Addy, praying for an end to all animal suffering. Goodbye.